All right, guys, today we're going to make some yellow, lemon yellow uh, tank shad. All right. I'm starting off with swim bait blend. I'm going to do about two ounces. That's enough to make a few. We're going to heat her up to about one. All right. Ain't what I want to do. 150, let's go 155. All right, now while that's heating, I'm gonna get my glitter ready. Now I'm gonna do it to one side of it, guys. I got a fan going across here and it's blowing to a garage door behind you. Yeah, just look, look, look behind you, you'll see it. All right, now we're gonna add silver 008. Okay, this is real little tiny stuff. And we're gonna add go uh, chartreuse 008, all right? I'm going to put it in a cup over here. I'm going to measure it out by a little teeny mini spoon. And I'm going to put about a, uh, about a quarter of a teaspoon. It's one eighth teaspoon. I'm going to put about, about a, uh, just a smidge with that. We don't need much. you got to figure out how much you're using according to how much you got. So I must see the flake flying. I, when I say a smidge, that's what I'm getting, guys. Whoops, that's probably too much there. Just like that right there. Well, that spoon, that's all I need. Cause we don't have a lot of plastic, right? Three ounces. So you gotta be careful. Look, you can always add more. If you don't like it when you stir it up and look at it, you can always add more. But if you put too much in, you can't take it back out, guys. It, it don't work that way. All right, now, that's black. I don't even know why I have black down there. We're gonna use lemon coloring. And then I'm gonna put just a touch of pearl powder in it, okay? Okay, there's the sound we've been waiting for. She's done. Now, first thing I'm going to do is stir it just a couple licks. We need to break 350. Oh, I can tell you right now, she's there. You have to worry, guys. You can learn by the feel of it, how it stirs. How it stirs. <laughs> how it stirs. It's, it's 390. That's plenty hot. you got to break 350. Almost cooked it, didn't it? you got to watch. And that's, I'm going to tell you what, it's not hard to get it too hot. All right. Now, there's the lemon color. Okay, y'all can see that. Let me look in the camera. Yeah, y'all can see that. Guys, filming is something else. Y'all never experienced that. On the water, I can say lately, I'm putting up just a smidge of pearl powder. On the water lately, I've been getting home, no audio. Camera stopping while you fight the fish. I check it every once in a while what the battery strength is. It goes 20%. I go, well, I can do one more fish. And I'm using batteries now, small batteries, because I'm using the mic. And if you use a, uh, you can use a power adapter, you know, for batteries. But it plugs in the same, plugs in the same uh, plug in on the on the camera. I don't know what you call that. I lost the thought, my thought there, guys. I look, it's it's uh, it's dark outside. <laughs> I done got up early. I done fished today. Made a port of catch. Break leaves. Been making leaves for a while, been doing things like that. And uh, now I'm here making baits. So sometimes I sometimes I'll try to do too much in one day, Don. Alright, here we go. That, but that's what look, no we don't go. See that? That's what I said. Let's put the flake, let's put the uh, glitter in there. I call it flake guys, it's glitter. Glitter flake label. Alright, let's stir that up. Now, that really changed it, didn't it? All right, let's start off. Duh. All right. <laughs> like I said, I'm trying, I'm trying to do too much in one day here, guys. That's my fault. All right, it's just a tank shad. That's what we're doing, guys. We're doing a tank shad. All right. Up. Bam. All right. Let's let that cool. We'll open it up and see what we got. All right, folks. Now. You know what you got to do on a port of catch. You got to put a number down between 1 and 150, what we're still doing. And whoever gets closest to that number without going over is going to win these tank shads. And guys, I usually send out four to five packs. I'm getting great comments from the guys that's winning the baits and getting them. They're catching nice fish on them. They are happy with them. They like the colors I send. I'll send a mixture of colors. Woohoo! Okay. Bam. There you go. Look at those. Think a crappy gonna like those and see those guys? This tank shad's a good bait. Uh, I know I haven't done a whole lot, uh, too many porter catches with it, but it's a good bait. 
I use the little fluke a lot, the little two inch, two and a, actually a two and a quarter inch fluke. I've done a lot of videos with that. Uh, but and I got the willow tail now. It does good. And I got the stinger shad. And I'm really getting attached to that stinger shad. It, uh, it's got some fish. I right, put your number down between 1 and 150. Let's say the number is 100. Now what I'm going to do when I edit this video, I'm going to go in here. After I catch, go fishing with it, bring my clips back, edit it, and I'll write a number down. Whoever gets closest to that number without going over that number. If I, if I write down 100 and you put down 105 and somebody else puts down 98, the 98 is going to win because they didn't go over the number. That's just the criteria we're going to use. Guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. I thank you for watching Fishing Lake Country. Thank you for being a part of it. Guys, continue to grow. And I appreciate that. The clips are coming next with the fish that we're going to catch on them. At the end, I'll tell you a little bit about my fishing day. Okay? Appreciate you guys. I don't say that enough. My name is Dennis. Let's watch the clips, and I'll see you in the outro. That's like a nice one, guys. That's the first one of the evening. Oh, gosh, it is a nice one. Damn it. Right. Uh, that's a real nice one. Bam. Wow. Wow. Good way to start. Bait fell out of his mouth. He's been caught before. I think I've probably caught him before, haven't I? What do you think of that one, guys? He's over 14. Look how thick he is. He's a, that's what you call a slab, isn't it? That is a slab. All right. We're going to let him go. Now, guys, I was throwing another bait here. I'm a tank shad. Let me get it out of the net. The only bad thing about netting them sometimes, it's a real light chartreuse silver flake. That's in the tank shad. All right. Let's see if we can catch another. Y'all can see the water's nasty, can't you? We had uh, two days of rain, and I know a lot of y'all did too from that hurricane, and it got cold, you know, so I got a long sleeve shirt on. The water temperature's dropped 10 degrees. I got another one. Now y'all can see I'm standing in the back of the boat. That's the vanish with spot lock, guys. People asked me, somebody asked me the other day about spot lock. I said, where the vanish spot lock is, the wind's coming from that direction, right? The dock's behind me. So I can't face the dock because the wind's blowing me into it. So I face the boat toward the wind, let the spot lock hold me. Okay, that makes sense. H, that's my finger. All right, whole tank shad. He's a small one. That's okay. That's okay. I'll get a I'll get a live scope shot here in a minute for y'all guys. I have to turn the boat around to get a live scope shot. Right now I'm not using the live scope. So I've seen the crappy up under there. I know about where they're where they're setting. They're setting about middle ways of this platform, and they're about six foot deep. So I'm just letting them what I think is fall, then I'm just reeling it back slow. And this dock has a brace on it. So I can't let it sink down and come bring it all the way. It's got, got a brace going from this post to that one, guys. Now, I'm trying a new microphone out today, guys. I made a video two days ago using this microphone. Well, using one like it. I got three of them. I bought three of them in a kit. And uh, anyway, I tested it at home in the basement. Done a little talking. Went upstairs, put it on the computer. Had volume. Had everything. Had audio. Come out made a video. Caught some crappy. Went home to sit down. There you go, guys. Oh, this is a nice one, too. I act like it. Went home to edit the video, and guess what? I didn't have no audio. So, I'm out here again today. We're making the video. I just I deleted it and threw it away. If you don't have no audio, I could have talked over it, I reckon. But it's not the same. I just, I thought, you know what? I can, I can catch those fish again. You know, I can go back out and catch them. Now my boat's changing position on me. Y'all see that? So it's windy, we've had a cold front. Uh-oh, we'll get bit here now. I think he's over down the yard. He sounds like he's pretty big. I don't want to fool with him. All right, got it out. Oh, tank shad. Now, that's, like I said, that's a real light chartreuse. Now, I got chartreuse flake in it, and a real tiny flake, the 08 size flake. That's another nice one, guys. He's not as big as the first one. He's a 14, 13, he's probably 13 and, he's probably 13 and seven eighths. That first one was over 14, I'm sure. All right, there's the crappy guys. See him on the pile? 
Boat's too close now. I got one guy. Oh, you got my. I had one, and he had me hung up on the dock. I told y'all I was a cross, as a cross braces on these docks. They do that a lot in these lakes. He had me hung up on the cross brace, and I thought, well, one broke me off earlier. But I got him. I have checked my line now. I got him though. And this is six pound on this rod. That's why I'm using six pound floor clear. If y'all never use floor clear, I love it. It skips easy. It's the reason I'm using it. I got to watch. The wind is blowing in circles. Now, y'all noticed earlier I was fishing out of the back of the boat. Well, then the thing spun around. And I got y'all a live scope shot when it spun around. And then now it's taking me back around. That's when the wind's doing those numbers. It comes from every direction. Don't y'all hate those days when there's no direction to the wind? All right, come on, baby. I got you. Little piece of skin holding me here, guys. Come on, Dennis. Get him back in the water. He's a nice one, too, boy. He's a 12 and a half. Thank you, sir. Oh, boy. I'm having fun, guys. I love catching crappy that size. Now, y'all heard me say it before. I get in those six and seven inches. Yeah, I'll catch a few. I'll quit. That's the size I like them. 10, 11 inches and up. I'll stay with those. I'm, now I'm going to get the boat turned back around here. I'm getting my rod and see if I can catch another one. All right, guys. Look at my boat's turned around again. The wind's turned me. I'm spinning in circles here from the wind. When it gives me this opportunity, it's easier to cast from the back of the boat. I don't have to worry about the trolling motor. And <laughs> I like fishing from the back of the boat. I hear guys complaining about that all the time. I'm in the back of the boat. Well, a lot of times, and so make them back boat you too. We call that back boat, don't give you a chance. But a lot of times, you got a better chance. You don't have to run the trolling motor. You don't have to worry about where the boat's at. Pay attention to that. Oh. And uh, there's a lot of times, you can cast like that. You don't have to worry about casting over the trolling motor and rod hitting that. And I got the, the, live, the live scope pole, too. I got to worry about that. The holds the transducer. You got to cast over that, too. I'm getting hard to catch now, guys. I've caught about five or six of them here. Now my boat's getting a little too close. Come on, bot lock. Go forward. Sometimes it scares me, guys. I have to go up there and move it. <laughs> it gets me too close. I'm too close now. It's running. I hear it running, so it's going to... See, now it's pulling us up a touch. Got the bump. They're bumping it, but they ain't grabbing it now. Remember the crappies, when they commit, uh, they take it, you know, a lot of times. They don't do that bump. A lot of times, that's some perch in there with them. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's your line and your bait hitting the crappie, believe it or not. My son and I was out last year, was in a... Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago now, to be honest with you. He was in a school of crappy. And he was talking about it. He said, Dad, I can actually feel my bait and my line hitting the crappy that's not biting. <laughs> Is that many crappy were there? It was hundreds of them. It was in the wintertime, guys. It was, actually, it was Christmas Eve, I think. But uh, there were so many stacked up in a spot, you could feel your bait hitting them as it's falling down through them. And they'd move out of the way of it. You'd feel your bait fall again. Now, if y'all ever been in that situation or not, but... It's where your line and stuff is stopping it. And, you know, they're stopping your line. They're stopping to follow your bait. There's one. That's, all right. Get in past this pole. All right, guys. We've got two live actions on this. It's like a white crappie, I believe. No. That's a black. Guys, I don't catch many white crappie here when I, when I say that. Yeah, it is a white crappie. I thought it was. Dang. It's number seven. The seventh white crappie I've caught this year. We don't have many white crappie here. Same, get the thumb, using the same bait, guys. Get them bars on him. All right, he's about, mm, he's about 10 and a half, maybe. He's probably 11, 11 and a half, I imagine. All right, guys. I'm going to catch one more in this bait. And uh, we might just do something else now. Who knows? 
I'm gonna go hit another dock. Let's see if we can get one lure off here. Now, guys, I'm caught all these fish now. Everything you've seen so far, I've caught on the same bait. I haven't switched baits. Do you notice something? There's no no lead on that. I cut it off. The head gets a little loose sometimes, but I cut it off. The reason I mention that, I hear people say, all oh, these baits are so soft. I have some people, I gave these baits to some people. They go, well, your baits are good. They're a little soft. Sometimes they're one fish, and I'm going to like, no, I'm getting a lot of fish from one bait. What you're doing is you're leaving that lead borrow, and that's with any brand of bait, guys. And you push it up on it, and the lead breaks its nose out, right? So it'll move a little bit now because I don't caught a lot of fish on it. I can take right now and put one drop of super glue right there. I got some super glue with me. And I can push that back, and I can use this bait till they tear it off. Hey, folks. Thank you all for watching Fish and Lake Country. I appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing. This is the tank shed we was using today. Okay? It's a lemon yellow color with a, just a little bit of small flake in it. It worked really good. Okay? Now, you can see the tank shad is a nice bait. It's wide at the top. It gets there as it goes back toward the tail. Segmented it right there. It works really good. Okay? It's a good bait. It's an Angler AI mold. People have been asking me about the molds, where I've been getting it from. All my molds right now have come from Angler AI or Jacob's Baits. And I've got two molds from Epics that are swim baits for bass. And I caught a couple of bass today. They got to break and I got to throw in. I caught a couple of bass from those. But they're four inch swim baits and I got, a, I got a finesse worm. And I got a couple more coming from Angler AI on the way. They're bass molds. But I'm doing both. I'm pouring for bass and crappie and I'll be throwing both of them in there. So I'll be doing some porter kitchens for bass too. But this work, this bait worked fine. We had some, we got some color to our water, guys. It's after the hurricane. Okay, this is late September. This uh, we're on the last week of September, and this is after the hurricane. The water dirtied up. We got cold. The crappie were piled up tight under docks. They was not easy to catch today. I had had a hard time getting to them. I found crappie on about five docks. It's probably fished about twelve, and I found crappie on about five of them. Now going back to docks, guys. I've caught crappie off before in the past. Crappie seemed to like. If you find a dock that's, that crappy you're using, from, from time to time throughout that year, they're going to be on that dock. Now, in the spring, it's a different thing. During the spawn, that don't count. In the spawn, they're everywhere, okay? Right after the spawn, uh, crappy will pile up on docks and school up. When you start spawning those docks, they will use those docks from time to time throughout the year. The docks that have at least 12 to 14 foot of water on them, in the front, at, least, at least at the front of the dock. I don't mean where you're sitting, they're at the front post of the dock. If it's in 12 to 14 foot, you'll find crappy on those docks off and on through the summer until the water gets too hot. Some of y'all guys up north probably all summer. Here, they, they go to docks at least 15 to 18 foot during the summer, and they go out on points and stuff. Now they're coming back. The last couple of weeks, they're starting to come back to docks, and they're piling up on docks. With this cold front, like I said, I could find them, but they was piled up tight. They was cooled real tight, and it was back almost in the middle of the docks and back toward the bank further. So I had a really hard time getting to them. So our docks have a lot of braces and stuff when you got to work around. And you lose a lot of jigs. I don't know how many I lost today. I probably lost five or six. I usually probably lose three, two to four or five a trip, guys, when I'm fishing docks, okay? But the shad works. I'm going to mail them out to you. I usually mail about four packs of baits, like 10 to 12 on a pack, guys, when I mail them out. Let's don't mail you one little pack. If I'm going to pay shipping, I'm going to mail you something worthwhile. I'm getting good comments, feedback from people that say, hey, I appreciate the baits. I've got some nice baits. Thank you. So... That's what it's all about. I want you to win. And when somebody wins, I want you to get a package. It's worthwhile, okay? And if you catch some big crappy on their slabs, let me know something about it. Come back and hit me up on the YouTube and say, hey, I caught some nice crappy on those. Uh, I've had a couple of all back to the catching some fish on them. You see me catch fish on them? So I know you can too. Guys, thank you for watching Fishing Lake Country. My name is Dennis. We'll see you next time on Border Catchers on Sunday. Wednesday's just a fun video, okay? Because some people be leaving numbers on Wednesday. It's just a fun video. Four to catch us on Sunday. And Wednesday evening, I sit down and look my number up. I write a number down. I'm going to go pre tonight and write a number down for this. And Wednesday evening, I'll look and see who got the closest, and I'll notify you on Wednesday evening. Okay? Then I'll load the Wednesday video. See you next time, guys. Fishing Lake Country.